so right now, uh, get ourselves ready for the ministry of the Word of God. And I've been uh, talking to you about our hunger for God. You know, hunger for God is something that we should always have and something that we should always develop and allow to grow inside of us. Because we cannot have more of God in our lives unless we truly uh, get a hungry and thirsty for God. Without such, everything about our relationship with the Lord will be religious and mechanical. And the moment you have come down to this level, you have deteriorated spiritually. And therefore, your service to God is simply attending a church. You're not opening up your heart to God. You're not wanting for more. So we cannot allow ourselves to deteriorate into this level. That is why we need to always be craving for Him. Look at somebody and say, crave for God. Now, this is the reason for this study. We are now on our sixth uh, study on rekindling our hunger for God in our lives. Ang pagpasiga sa atong kagutom, alang sa Diyos, sa atong kinabuhi. And uh, last week, we have looked at how there is a place that God has reserved for those who are hungry for Him. And it is a place where the streams of God or streams of living water flows. Here, our thirst can be quenched and our hunger will be satisfied. And in, in this place, a city will be built. And to be honest, there is already a city where there is a flowing stream of God's uh, presence. And this is where the sit, this is where rather God dwells, where He exists. That is right there in His own uh, presence. So tonight, as we continue to build our, uh, or to build ourselves on this study, I want us uh, to look into how hunger will dictate and direct our lives. Ang atong kagutom, maoy diktar o magtultol sa atong kinabuhi. So, we need to learn how hunger can actually be the director of our lives or the dictator of our lives. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we ask you to be with us. And uh, thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, God, for how you already have moved. And right now, as we come to you, I pray that your word will be uh, become our food, Lord God, tonight and satisfy us, O oh God. Thank you that everyone is ready to receive your word. And I am your servant, and I pray that I will be able to preach your word with power and uh, anointing and with clarity. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, I got three things to share to everybody this evening. And I want us to start with this, that one's appetite dictates the direction of his life. Ang gana sa usakatao ang nagdiktar sa direksyon sa iyang kinabuhi. Can you say, my appetite? Now, the appetite of man will always lead their lives uh, or to where their lives will be headed. The appetite of man leads them to what? Or to where their lives will be satisfied. Just like Example, daily uh, example nato. If 
there is someone who craves for fried chicken. And really craving for fried chicken. That will dictate his speed to go where he can find the chicken, the fried chicken that he wants. And mamili na lang siya kung Kenny Rogers or Kenny Rogers lang. Or KFC, Jollibee, McDonald's, or Penong's, or whatever. If uh, that appetite is really strong, he cannot resist it. Okay? He cannot resist it. That appetite must be satisfied. Similarly, if that is a passion for possessions or hunger, an appetite for possessions, then this will lead him to get possessions. This appetite will lead him to acquire possessions, whether he will work for it, really, or he will do evil to gain this. Now, if this is an appetite, let's apply this spiritually, if this is an appetite and a craving for God, then that person will find himself being in the presence of God, praying, growing in the Word, and sharing the words to other or to others. We find actually this truth stated in Proverbs chapter 16. Go with me, let's analyze this verse. The laborer's appetite works for him. His hunger drives him on. The laborer's appetite works for him. And his hunger drives him on. Now, what it says is that the appetite of a worker, or I will say modern term, an employee, is what will push him to work. His hunger will tell him what to do. Why do people work? Because they want to eat, right? Right, basically, you want to provide for your family, you want uh, food on the table, for your children, that's why you work. Your appetite is working for you. Is that everybody here? Nakuha nyo? So, the work he does is basically to satisfy his appetite or hunger. And we can relate this to all areas of life that we hunger for. Is it for food? Is it for power? Is it for fame? Is it for riches? Or is it for God? The hunger of men will drive him on towards satisfying what he craves for. Yung ating uh, kagutuman, yan ang magtutulak sa'yo para magtrabaho ka. Gawin mo ito, okay? Even those people, uh, you know, uh, beggars, they would do something in order to what? Feed themselves, right? So with the rich people. Now, in all this, our spiritual appetite should always take the prime list in our lives, our spiritual ap appetite should always take the prime list in our lives. The hunger and the longing for God should always be our top priority. Look at five people and say, that should be your top priority. Do we really have a hunger for God? Are we really wanting to have more of Him in our lives. I like to uh, quote John Piper. How many of you are familiar, familiar with John Piper? Uh, in his book, Hunger for God. And he says, if we don't feel strong desires for the manifestation of the glory of God, it is not because you have drunk deeply 
and are satisfied. It is because we have nibbled so long at the table of the world. Our soul is stopped with small things and there is no room for the great. I don't know if you're able to pick up what he says, but explain to lang. What he says is, is, is that if there is no strong longing for God and His glory in our lives, maybe, say maybe, maybe. we have spent most of the time in the world, feeding on the world and the things of the world. Such are small and unimportant things that we have stopped our souls with so that there is no room inside us for what is great. And that great is God and His presence. Diba nag-illustrate ako about two weeks ago about the junk foods of uh, life? Say junk foods of life. The junk foods of the world. If you feed yourself with these junk foods, you will already be satisfied and you will not have any more room for God. Just like how you will spoil your lunch or your dinner. Siga ka um junk foods that evening. And then obviously, when it's about time for dinner, you already are stuffed. So you cannot eat what is set before you for dinner. That is the great parts of uh, your eating, not the junk foods. Is everybody here? So this is what actually he's saying. You will not have any room for God anymore. Because <clears throat> binusug mo na ang sarili mo. You have filled up yourself with the world and you have no more space inside of you for God. Is everybody listening? But one thing that we have to know is that our hunger for God and the things of God are what will really bring us victory in life. How many of you would like to be victorious? If we put that uh, physical food, what you should eat must always be healthy. Okay, junk foods are not healthy, right? No, they're not healthy food. Sige ka gaong chips or whatever you can find. And, you know, just to fulfill your appetite, your hunger quickly, but they are not healthy. Look at somebody and say, eat what is healthy. Now, we, we apply this to our hunger for God. And the things of God. This is what will bring us victory in life and success. Hello? Is everybody here? Look at five people and say, do you want to be successful and victorious? Always hunger for God and the things of God. We already have talked about this several weeks ago. That always the presence of God will bring you to victory. And everybody said, will always lead you to success. Just like King David, who was a very successful man, a successful king, a successful warrior. Why? Because he was always in the presence of God. And everybody said, now learning all this, let us connect this to my second point. The hunger and the craving for God is the very core of our beings. Okay, ang atong kagutom o pangandoy alang sa Dios mao ang kina kina uyukan. Did I pronounce it right? Kina kina uyukan sa atong pagkatao. You know, God made us this way. The hunger and the craving for God is the very core of our beings. At to sa Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. 
Thou art worthy, the King James Version, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they were what? Created. Can everybody read the last uh, words you know, like a highlight one two three and for thy they are and were created did you see that for thy pleasure for thy happiness God they uh, they are and were created now we were not made by God for anything we were not even made to do our own things. But we were made for His pleasure. Look at somebody and say, you were made for God's pleasure. Made to please God. That's our purpose. That's why God created us. Now, what does it mean that we were made for His Pleasure. Well, simply it means that we were made to make God happy, delighted. And how do we make God happy and pleased? Sa unang atong mga o atong himuon that that we can make God happy and pleased. Let's read it again. Thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive honor and glory and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they were created. Thou art worthy, God. So, how do we make God happy and pleased? It is by worshiping Him. It is by singing to Him, by praising Him. It is by being in His presence Pursuing Him, seeking Him, and developing a bond with Him. In short, listen carefully. God has built in us the things that will always please Him. Inside of us. Look at somebody again and say, God made you to please Him. But you know what the devil did, right? The devil tried uh, to pull Adam and Eve from God, and he succeeded. He was able to tempt them, and they fell. And no longer from that point on was man able to please God. Are you here? God selected some people in order to continue to please him. He found Abraham. He found uh, all those guys in Genesis. See, Noah. He, uh, he, he, he found Enoch and so on. Then Abraham, David. But finally, Jesus Christ came and died for our sins. And so those who believe in him can please God once again. Are we not to please God every day? Are we not to make the face of God happy? Yes, no. Are we not to make Him always smiling? Yes. We are to please our Father. And such will fulfill our purpose why we were created. We are created and were created. Okay, present and past tense. Again, uh, Adam and Eve, at the beginning, they were giving God pleasure. And kita, since we were born again, and the Spirit of God is moving in our lives, the Spirit will always help us to hunger and thirst for God. He creates this desire inside of us. Ato ning basahon sa Romans 8.26. And uh, look at this passage and relate how the Holy Spirit 
helps us to uh, long for God, to crave for God, or to be near God. Romans 8, 26 to 27, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We don't know how we ought to pray. We have limitations. We are affected by our situations or conditions that, there, uh, that sometimes we can't pray to God. We don't know what we ought to pray. But the Spirit, can you say the Spirit? Spirit. Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. But possible, He helps us. He works in us so that we can call on God. And everybody said, Na atay katabang ang balang spiritu, He always makes us call on God. Even in times that we don't know how to pray, His help is always avail available. 27, and He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Look at somebody and say, thank God you have the Spirit. Amen. Say that to the other person beside you. Say, isa pa. Say, okay, isa pika stapad. God is always good. And the Spirit is there. That will always help us to be close with God. And in this way, God will always be happy with us. Now, in contrast, turning away from Him, from God, will displease God. Ang pagtalikod, gikan, kaniya, dili makapahimuot sa atong Diyos. Look at Leviticus 26, 31. It is implied here, I will turn your cities into ruins and lay waste your sanctuaries and I will take no delight or pleasure in the pleasing aroma of your offerings. God said, I will not delight in your worship. That's another way to say it. I will take no pleasure in all your sacrifices because you have turned away from me. Now there is another verse but this is strong that we find in Hebrews chapter 10 Hebrews 10 35 my righteous one will live by faith hallelujah and if he what shrinks back I will not be pleased with him hello now, we were made for God's pleasure. But the moment we turn away from God, we don't live in accordance to righteousness and faith. We shrink back. God says, I will not be pleased with him. I want you to listen. The devil will always create a way for man to displease God. Ang yawa mismo... Uh, kanunay nga maghimu og paagi aron ang, ang tao uh, dili makapahimu od sa Dios. And one of the ways he will attempt to do that is by causing a righteous man to fall away from the faith. Are you here? And turn from his maker. Now, God will no longer be happy with us. But as long as you are in God, you love God, you worship God, you pray, you obey Him, He will always be happy. And everybody said, But ang yawa, the devil does not want you to please God. So he will always create ways to stop you or disrupt you from spending time with God. Mismo ang yawa, He will always make a way 
to stop you from spending time with God. He will create a lot of disruption or destructions in your life. He will feed you with the world so that you don't have any more room for God inside of you. In short, the devil does not want you to hunger and thirst for God. Are you here? Are you here? Now, when that happens, God cannot feed you anymore. He cannot satisfy you spiritually. Because where there is no hunger and thirst for God inside, God cannot satisfy you. Look at this verse, 146 Psalm, verse 7. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives what? Food to the hungry. God gives food to the hungry. But how can God feed you or give you food when you're not hungry for Him? God gives food, or he feeds the hungry. But if you're not hungry for God, how can God feed you spiritually? Is everybody here? Something is definitely wrong when a believer does not hunger and thirst for God. That individual is sick spiritually. Look at five people and say, don't be sick spiritually. Don't be sick spiritually. Come on. Is everybody here? Is everybody here? Hunger and thirst for God is the very core of our beings. We were created for what reason? We are and were created for what reason? But to please God. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say again, or as many as you can say, be a pleaser of God. Be a pleaser of God. <laughs> That's why we are not to be pleasers of men. Amen. We are to be pleasers of our God. Parati, look at this always. Your life is meant to make the face of God happy. That's the reason why Enoch was taken by God. God was so pleased with him. God could not wait for him to die. So God said, I will take you now. Hello? I will take you now. I'm so pleased with how you live your life. I cannot wait for you to die. I want to take you right now. So God took him. He did not die. Hello? How many of you like to be raptured by God? Amen. Keep on pleasing God. And everybody said, Amen. keep on making his face happy. And God will be happy to take you. Amen. Now lastly, the thing about hunger for God, this is not a long sermon. The, the, the thing about hunger for God is that hunger for God is depicted in all the Bible. Ang kagutom sa Diyos gihulagway sa tanang Biblia. Depicted in all the Bible, from the Torah to the prophets of the Old Testament to the time of the Lord up to Revelation, God's people are shown as uh, those who have developed, developed a great desire for God. From Abraham to Moses, Joshua to David, and all the prophets of God uh, in the Old Testament, all these men have longed for God in their lives. All the 12 apostles, to Paul, to Timothy, to Titus, and the rest, 
they were all people who desired for more of God in their lives. And here is Paul's uh, inspiring uh, words for all times. Okay, Philippians 3 verse 10. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Hello? Here's an old man, and uh, when he wrote this, he was in prison in the dark dungeon of Rome. And there he wrote this. I want to know Christ. This is his first imprisonment. And I believe, listen carefully, that the missing ingredient in many churches today is the hunger and thirst for God. See, maraming churches are not that hungry for God, to be honest, and maraming Christiano. And if only churches and Christians are really hungry and thirst for God, you know what will happen? Revival. Revival will break out everywhere when God's people are like this. Lives will be changed. Sinners will come to Jesus. If only the people of God are hungry for him. Let me quote this from Ben Patterson in his book, Deepening Your Conversation with God. It's on page 171. He said, we have become satisfied with mere church, mere religious exertion, mere numbers and buildings, the things we can do. There is nothing wrong with these things, but they are no more than foam left by the surf on the ocean of God's glory and goodness. Now pick up you. Say foam left by the surf on the ocean. Sa time yan? Bakit tumunog? Ha? Bumalik ang tunog? Wala na yan for a while, ha? Kung saan nahitabo pa sa Ramaki? Okay, nawala na. If you are familiar with, uh, you know, uh, the waves of the sea going to the shore, di ba may dalang mga foam ang oceans that are left there? What he's saying is that, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this, but they are just like foams left by the surf on the ocean of God's glory. He continued and also wrote, since the best teacher is the Holy the best teacher of prayer is the Holy Spirit, the best way to learn to pray is by praying. Whether and how much we pray is, listen, I think finally a matter of appetite or hunger. For God and all that He is and desires. I believe these words have great truth. Our time with God and our prayer to Him largely depends on our hunger for God. Okay, we pray. Pero, how do you pray? Or how long you pray? It's a matter of your hunger for God. Okay? So, depends largely on our hunger for Him. And I believe a great revival of the heart must take place in the churches today. 
Si marami Kristiano di already get satisfied with just fulfilling a religious duty and never really are craving for a personal relationship with God. As I've said, maka uh, sulod lang simbahan okay na sa ilaha. Okay? Tagalog, makatungtong lang simbahan, okay na. But it's ne- never okay unless we encounter God as we come into His presence. Amen? We're not here to listen to great sermons, but we are here to say, God, I want more of you. I am hungry. I am thirsty. And everybody said, and everybody said, are you listening to me? Okay, are you receiving what I'm sharing? Now, nonetheless, only in the presence of God uh, can our spiritual hunger be truly met and satisfied. Only in the presence of God. I want you to take this word from Hannah, Samuel's mother, when she finally got their prayer answered when um, Samuel was born to her. For Samuel chapter 2, verse 5, those who were full hired themselves out for food. But those who were hungry, hunger no more. This is a miraculous work of God. Those who were full, katong mga busog na, they still have themselves hired out for food. But those who were hungry, hunger no more. And, he, and she's talking about how God responds, how God is a good God, and nothing is impossible uh, to Him. And everybody said, Look at somebody and say, hunger no more. When you're hungry for God, God will fulfill your hunger. Now, in the book of Revelation, when we finally uh, will be before the throne of God, I want us to see what will happen there. Revelation 7, 15 to 16 Therefore, they are before the throne of God, talking about those who are in heaven or made, they made it to heaven. They are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple, and He who sits on the throne will spread their tent over them. 16. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. Why they are in the presence of God. Is everybody here? So being in the presence of God is what? How our hunger and thirst will be fulfilled. We will be pleasing God every time and God will satisfy us. Even right now, you... You don't have to be hungry every time. As long as you are in the presence of God, you know how to worship God, God feeds you constantly. God satisfies you every time. When you are in His presence every night or every morning, that day is already complete. Why? You have eaten and you have what? Drunk from the presence of God. And everybody said, okay, so you wake up in the morning and you rush because late na ka, you don't have uh, time anymore to pray and seek the face of God, so you rush out. And then you come back very tired in the evening. You don't have any more time with God. Tell you, if that is uh, already a uh, thing that you have developed, you will be hungry for God. And you will try to seek uh, to satisfy it 
in the world. Our hunger can only be uh, filled in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Remember John 6, 35? Jesus said, or Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Is everybody here? So, importante yung kumain ka at uminom ka sa Panginoon. Is everybody here? I told you it, it runs from the Old Testament to the, Old, uh, to the New Testament. Now, Revelation 22, 17, and I will leave you with a call of the Spirit and the Bride. Today, this is for today, Revelation 22, 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. Whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Now, sabi natin walang hunger yan. Well, it's always connected Thirst and hunger, they always are connected. Are you here? Are you here? Revelation 3.20. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever, what? Hears and opens the door, I will come into him and I will dine with him. Hello? Jesus said, I will eat with him. If you hear the knock of the Lord, and normally we use this as an unbeliever in sharing the gospel, but the context is the churches. Jesus knocking at the door of some of us and saying, let me in. I want a fellowship with you. And whoever hears and opens the door and lets Jesus in, will have a moment of great fellowship, dining with the Lord. Hello? Is everybody alive? Amen. Amen. So you see hunger and thirst, they are very important in our relationship with the Lord. Hindi nawawala yan. All throughout the Old Testament to the New Testament. And one of the things that will happen in the future in heaven is that we will never get hungry and thirsty anymore. We will be satisfied <coughs> with the presence of Jesus. Did you receive the word of God tonight? Did you receive the word? Give the Lord a clap offering, everyone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stand up. Once again, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. Everyone lift up your hands to the Lord. Even those who are watching online, lift, uh, lift up your hands to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I just pray in tongues, everyone. Horabayashikadabayasan. Era ba yasan na yan? Hara yasan. Hara ba yasan na yan? Ora ba yasakan diya ba yashi? Dekara ba yasan diya san? Yekara yasan diya shi? Tora ba yasan diya? Ora ba yashi? Yasakan. Ora ba yashi? Harabaya sandia sand, O Rabaya sakarabayashi, O Rabayashi, Halabayashi kandia sand, O Rabayashi sand, O Rabayashi, Haya, Herabayashi sand.
Thank you, Jesus. Say to the Lord God, we want you, we're hungry for you. We want to sing it out to God right now. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I walk with those who want to walk with me. I am with those who desire me in their lives. I watch those who are always in my presence, who are always longing for me. My children, I am your God. And I am the living God. I crave for your presence. I crave for your worship. I crave for your time to be with me. I long for you in the inner chamber in the secret place for in the secret place I dwell I long for you in that place I desire you to be in that place where we can talk and spend time together privately I am a living God and I desire a living relationship. I'm not a dead God. I'm a living God. For my children, I long for a living relationship with you, says your God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We bless your name. Oh, Rabbi Yashi Asan.
Give the Lord a clap for offering everyone.